Where are you from? No, I'm not asking where you currently live. I'm asking you, where are you actually from? Places are complex, and the inner workings of these spaces have had an impact on how we see and value them. We are products of place, but oftentimes we do not appreciate the places that have sprouted us because we only see the negatives. However, if we rediscover our roots, we provide us the ability to reconnect with our histories, see our past, and reinvigorate our perceptions of these spaces that will then lead and guide us into the future. Hawaii is where I have my roots. Hawaii is the one thing I love most about this world. Hawaii raised me and is where I will raise my future family. I'm so blessed to be able to call this place my home, an island in the sea where east and west meet, and the people are mindful and loving. We have beaches, and we have trade winds, and we have mountains, and the food, it's like no other. But for many of us, the image of Hawaii is plagued with chronic and long-standing problems associated with our colonial past. Aupuni Mo'i o Hawaii, the Kingdom of Hawaii, was founded in 1810. Hundreds of generations after the Polynesians sailed, settled, and made Hawaii their permanent residence. The native Hawaiians were constantly refining their practices, while also responding to new innovations introduced with Western contact. We had kings and we had queens, and our country was recognized by other foreign world powers. Our last queen, Lili Okalani, sought to take stronger control of the government with the new constitution. The shift in power would lessen the influence of American businessmen who are banking on the sugar trade with the United States. And so they organized an American-supported coup d'etat and planned to overthrow our queen. On January 17, 1893, our monarch was disposed of and a provisional government was instated. For five years, the people of Hawaii petitioned and protested against colonization. And yet, in 1898, we were annexed by the US after the Spanish-American War. To quote President McKinley, we need Hawaii just as much and a good deal more than we did California. It's manifest destiny. The overthrow of our government really changed things. The fundamental American values of justice, liberty, and freedom were not applied with the creation of modern Hawaii. Rather, it removed the ability of the people of Hawaii to have a say in the future of the islands. The U.S. went on to establish systems and infrastructures that didn't take into account the fact that we live on an island and we have a limited amount of resources, land, and space. The intensity of our problems is creating a fight or flight response in the people of Hawaii. Many of them are choosing to leave, but others are choosing not to run away from something we love. Rather, we're coming up with solutions that will help reverse maltreatment from the US government. We are inspired by a desire to have our past have a present in our futures. We always get asked, hey, Hawaii, you should be more like us. And Hawaii is like, aole, no, you should be more like us. We are looking to our ancestors, finding what their keys to success were, and using those lessons as potential solutions. We call this lifestyle choice sovereignty. This is a really strong word. It has a lot of negative connotations. But for many of us in Hawaii, sovereignty is a living promise 
to constantly advance and share our solutions for our Hawaii. One of our biggest issues today is food security. When Captain James Cook discovered Hawaii in 1778, the population of Native Hawaiians was about a million people, and that's not far from the current population of Hawaii. The Native Hawaiians were completely self-sustaining, living solely on the land and the sea. But Hawaii's location, our rich soil, our all-year planting season, made us a prime plantation destination. And so agricultural lands began being used for cash crops, like sugarcane and pineapple and coffee, you know, things that we're famous for. And now that the plantation era is over, those agricultural lands are used as GMO test sites. Hawaii's lands are not used to feed its own people. And today, we import 85 to 95 percent of our food. Imagine what will happen when the ships stop coming, the planes stop coming. The high cost of importation helps to explain why Hawaii is the most expensive state to live in. Food is culture. And what we eat literally makes up our bodies. But if we're not eating food that's from Hawaii, what does that say? The food sustainability movement in Hawaii has taken the form of the creation of more small farms, the growing of artisanal foods, and more local eateries supporting more local farmers. We have a long ways to go, but we do have some successes, one of which can be seen in the support of the movement towards more taro agriculture in Hawaii. This is Haloa, and the native Hawaiians have a very special connection with him. Using traditional hand-pounded stone and wood implements, taro or kalo is pounded into pa'iai or poi, our ancestral food. And I have to say, pa'iai, it's pretty super. It's non-GMO, dairy, soy, and gluten-free. It's hypoallergenic and doesn't need to be refrigerated. It's pretty awesome, but up until a few years ago, Pa'iai was considered illegal for human consumption and was not considered safe and could not be sold or shared. So our ancestral food was technically, yeah, illegal. So community elders, activists, law school students, and cultural practitioners came together and they formed a bill called the Legalized Pa'iai Bill, which fortunately passed in 2011. One of the biggest players in, the, in this movement was Uncle Daniel Anthony and his family, who are the current owners of Mana'ai Pa'iai, the first hand-pounded Pa'iai and Poi company in contemporary Hawaii. Their projects are focused around inviting all people from all around the world to Haloa, to Taro, while also encouraging them to support the Taro industry. The ability to do our practices again and share it with others, that is sovereignty. Another huge issue we have in Hawaii is education. The quality of your education is highly dependent upon which island you live on and how much money you have. An annual report put out by the Honolulu Magazine recently said that the 23 out of the 25 schools in Hawaii that are receiving A plus to A minus rankings based on meeting of national standards and test scores are all located on one island. And you know what? These 23 schools are elementary schools. The top high school in our state clocked in at 87th place with a C plus ranking. The education disparity for private schools is no less forgiving. Typically, tuition ranges between $13,000 and $20,000 a year, and they're also mostly located on one island. Researchers are finding that people from different places and different cultures and backgrounds learn more effectively with different styles of teaching. So teaching in Hawaii is trying to become more specialized, 
while also responding to community needs. Back in the 1980s, for the Native Hawaiians, one of the biggest concerns was the life of our language, which was severely limited by annexation, and at the time had dwindled down to only 1,500 Native speakers. Fears of our language disappearing created a need for people to teach and people to learn. And so the grassroots organization Aha Punana Leo was founded and started teaching preschool children. Now, 30 years later, those first preschool kids are fluent speakers. And they're followed by many more who have graduated through Hawaiian language programs, immersion schools, and charter schools. The number of native speakers now is in the thousands again. And I cannot express to you how amazing it is to be able to see people freely speaking in Hawaiian again. Because if the Hawaiian language does not survive, then we as Hawaiians don't survive. The boundaries as to when and where we can speak our language are also being expanded. One of my favorite examples is the work of my mentor, Herb Mahilona, who is now currently writing operas in Hawaiian language for the first time. In Hawaii, we're also fortunate to be able to be surrounded by the environment. We don't have to work too hard. The, as the most isolated place on Earth, we are unique in that we have a lot of flora and fauna that can't be found anywhere else in the world. However, the high rate of endemism is constantly under threat. And we have the distinction of having the highest rate of extinction per square mile on Earth. The US military is partially to blame for this. The island of Koho'olawe, one of our eight Hawaiian islands, was home to dryland forests, which included many endemic species. Koho'olawe was also valued as a cultural religious site. There are petroglyphs, and also celestial navigators were taught there. But the reasons why the native Hawaiians valued this island were overlooked by the military. And for 30 years, this entire island was used as a bombing range. If you want to feel the earth cry, go to Koho'olawe. The bombings, the lack of vegetation, caused the topsoil of this island to completely erode into the ocean. And now, the surface of Koho'olawe is as dry and barren as the surface of Mars. In the 1970s, a group of Native Hawaiians known as the Protect Koho'olawe Ohana decided they had enough. And they took action. They sued the military and won. They swam to Koho'olawe in protest to occupy it. And in 1990, their work culminated when the bombings finally stopped. And Koho'olawe became an island reserve, only to be used for Native Hawaiian cultural, religious, and subsistence practices. If it weren't for these Hawaiians who remembered and valued this place and forced the rest of the world to also remember with them, we would have lost Koho'olawe forever. The growth and popularity of our movements is proving that we have something here. We can be more independent. We can have our own solutions. Realizing the value of our roots have provided us the opportunity to have significant successes in the areas of food, education, and land protection. And we're not stopping there. We have a ton of other issues, some of which include transportation, waste, and homelessness. And we intend on using the same structures of looking to our past to help find solutions for these problems too. Today, we humbly ask you to please support our solutions. Hawaii is a beautiful place and is recognized as a beautiful place. Last year, a record 8.23 million tourists visited us, and they willingly contributed a record $14.5 billion into our economy. That's 21% of everything in, in Hawaii. However, what these vacation dollars are going into is the perpetuation of an image that isn't us into something that doesn't support our solutions, 
you know, those images like beaches and lays and dolphin riding and funky casual Friday shirts. <laughs> These things aren't really us or even fully us if it is us. We're more than that. We want you to help us. Hawaii is as perfect as it is imperfect. And we want to provide creative solutions that are passionate to reinvent the system. We know Hawaii, and we know what will work and what will not work. Today, I not, encourage you, not only encourage you to support us in our movement towards independence, but also rediscover your roots. Oftentimes, the places we come from don't receive the credit that they deserve. Behind every image are other stories, other histories that should be voiced and supported. If there's something prohibiting that from being happening, be that person to speak up. Make it heard. You need people to be receptive. You need people to support yourself, too. Make your home a place you can be proud of. Take action, because it's too late to stand idle anymore. Pu'u vai haukila. Have a heart of steel and be fearless. Oni pa'a. Be steadfast. It's worth it. Thank you.